So about a month ago, I did a video where I was doing the finale to Wrapped Up Risk, which was the last iteration of Wrapped Up. And the idea is I couldn't stop reading until I found a five star. And I was like, okay, I can't pick the books. I'm obviously gonna read like 10 books. I read one. The first book I read was a five star. <laughs> So if you watch that video, you'll know that at the end, I unwrapped five more books that had been wrapped up just to see would any of these, do I think any of these would have been a five star? Do I think if I had carried on reading to find a second five star, or if the first book hadn't ended up being a five star, would I have gotten one if I unwrapped five more books? And I got a lot of comments saying that they wanted me to then read those books. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. <laughs> I'm calling these the wrapped up rejects because they are no longer wrapped up. <laughs> They were just on my TBR. They did not succeed at being chosen in Wrapped Up during the 10 episodes that we had, but we're gonna read them anyways. I'd like to see that. I would like to see that. If you remember with Wrapped Up Risk, I had wrapped up 25 books I was most excited to read on my TBR and 25 books I was least excited to read. So I think it'll be interesting to split this TBR. We have three that I was most excited to read and two that I was least excited to read. Split them up into that and see whether that has any effect on the rating at all. So the ones that were in the most excited to read category, first we have The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. I know this is a pretty messed up thriller following I think abuse of women and sexual abuse of women in particular, but I have heard such good things. I I feel like everyone who has read this has loved it. And so I'm like, okay, <laughs> gonna have to read it. I gave In My Dreams a Hold and I have five stars. So I feel like if I keep on this trend, Ashley Winstead could become a favorite thriller author for me. Then we had Girl in the Walls by AJ Ganise. This is a mystery gothic book about a girl who lives in the walls of a house and the family start hearing stuff. I don't know if she's like a ghost. I don't know what's going on, but this is one that I have had on my TBR for a long time, for like two years actually. And I pre-ordered it and it's one that I've wanted to get around to for the longest time. There's just something about the vibe of this that I feel like could really work for me. And then we have Her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. Listen, it is government, UK government, secret witchy element of the UK government. I just can't, I can't take it. I can't take it. I feel like it's gonna be perfect for me. I've got the stage presence, I've got the voice, I've got the looks and I just have everything and I know I have. This might be the number one prediction on this list. This or The Last Housewife, I think are my biggest five star predictions on this list. But it's witches, I love witches, I love get back in there. <laughs> I enjoy politics. I listen to a lot of politics podcasts and quite politically engaged. So the idea of this witchy subsection of the UK government. I almost can't take it. I almost can't take it. <laughs> and then the two that were on the least excited to read list. First we have Every Line of You by Naomi Gibson. I just know this is about a girl who makes uh, AI that she like falls in love with. I don't know. This one was sent to me by the publisher. It was during an era where I think I accepted a lot of books from publishers. I would just take whatever I could get. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I wanted all the books because I couldn't believe that publishers would even send me books. Like that is kind of crazy. And also I accepted, this is 2021. So this is two years ago that I accepted this. Like I said, oh yeah, I'd love to receive that. I don't really read as much YA anymore at all. I think in 2021, my reading was 50% YA, 50% adult. And I don't know what the percentage, if I have to guess maybe 20%, YA this year is what I've read. And then the other book that was under least excited for, this has, this is, you know, some of those books I'm least excited for, because obviously I'm excited for all books on my TBR. They have like qualifying reasons. So the other book is Educated by Tara Westover. I know so many people have loved this. I've heard so many good things about it, but it is one of the oldest books on my TBR. It's one of the few books that are still on my TBR from before I started my channel, which is like four years ago. Actually, when is the anniversary? Is it like today? No, I don't know when the anniversary, <laughs> we're coming up to it. It's sometime in like mid to late September was when I started my channel. So yeah, this is one of the oldest books on my TBR. I think I've just not read it because I don't read as much nonfiction as I would like <laughs> in an ideal world. And I've just been a little bit intimidated by it. So that's why that was under least excited to read. So we are gonna be reading these five books in this vlog and seeing whether any of them could have ended up being a five star. I think we're gonna get one. Oh, I don't know if I should say that because five stars are just not happening for me this year. But I think we're gonna get a five star on this vlog. I think we're gonna get it. And if we don't, then we just cry. <laughs> Some of you asked me to read these and do this video. And a lot of these are books that I have been meaning to get to this year. So let's just get into it and see whether any of these are gonna be five stars. <laughs> Guys, I'm being deadly serious perhaps the worst book I've ever read. 
I'm, I'm not enjoying it. Not, I'm not. I hate it. I fucking hate it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, so I picked this first because I have to read. I'm working on other vlogs and I have to read a certain amount of books for a certain day. And this was obviously the quickest read. It is a quick read, right? It's dog shit. It's terrible. I don't like saying this. This is a debut author. The publisher sent me. I'm using a bookmark, like a cute little note that the publisher sent me. Like, oh my god, we love this book. I hope you love it too. And I feel terrible. I'm sorry, Liv. I'm letting you down. <laughs> I'm very sorry if I've let anyone down or if I've caused any ag, but I have to look after number one. <laughs> Guys, okay, so the premise, all you need to know about this book is we've got a, it's YA, we've got a protagonist who has recently, uh, her brother died in a car crash and her dad left home and she's going through it, she's got all this trauma and to cope with it, she makes this like AI? I guess is what you call him, like he's like code, this like being through co computer coding and she names him after her dead brother, Henry, and they're like hacking shit together. They're hackers. <laughs> hackers. Your software slays, by the way. Um, okay. It's terrible. <laughs> it's so bad. I don't know what to say to you. Like, I have trouble with young YA, right? Because this is young, in my opinion, young, young YA. The protagonist is 17, but it reads as the kind of thing I would have read when I was like 11 or 12, when like you've started secondary school. I remember we'd always like look in the library for like stuff that was at our reading level, but was like the most scandalous thing you could ever imagine reading. There was like a book in the library about a girl who'd like never had sex, but was pregnant. And like the librarian wouldn't let any of us year sevens um, check it out. <laughs> but we all wanted to. And by the time you're like, she would have let you check it out, like year nine, year you don't give a fuck. Cause that's like childish, childish, whatever. But as a kid, you're like, oh my God, how did that happen? That's so intriguing. I have trouble with these young way books because sometimes there's something about them that I don't have with YA or with middle grade, like older white, mid to older YA or middle grade, where like I can see how they're written for the audience. I enjoy reading those books, but there's something about this young YA kind of subsection that I always don't like. And I can never tell, is the book rubbish or is it just a problem that I have? But in this case, mm, yeah. Ooh, guys, it, mm, 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 mm. it is perhaps some of the worst writing I've ever read. It is so bad. <sighs> It reminds me of what I would write when I was like eight years old. Never forget when I wrote a story about like me like becoming the next singer and I was the Jonas Brothers protege. And the day after meeting, Nick comes up to my hotel room and asks me to be his girlfriend and wraps me up in a big bear hug. It's that kind of description. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm trying to find examples. She's done so much terrible stuff as well with this guy. She just keeps getting away. It's just terrible. It, this is terrible, 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 terrible. So bad. And I was reading some reviews on Goodreads and like someone, this is pure conjecture. Is that the right word? This is, I'm not, I'm not alleging anything. I'm just saying what I've seen on Goodreads. Okay. This is not my opinion. <laughs> but this other author is alleging that her book was used as like the basis for writing this. And this was written through some kind of software and like, there's a lot of conspiracy. What if AI wrote the AI book? I'm not saying that. It's, an opi it's not an opinion. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I read on Goodreads. It's a conspiracy theory that I'm actually interested in. But I'm not saying it's true. Please don't sue me. But I cannot emphasize to you enough just how terrible this I can't believe this was published. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's so bad. Let me find, let me find, because I know on Goodreads there was examples of like terrible quotes. And I feel bad. Yes, it's a debut, but like I have to speak my truth. Oh yeah, she's being bullied by the girl she was best friends with who was in the car with her on the car crash when her brother died. Anyways, Lydia Comedia, always in places you're not wanted. Did you go shopping, she snorts? We know you didn't do that. The only accident here is your outfit. No, 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 no. And like stuff is happening with the AI, with the like AI guy. I don't want to spoil it for you. Well, don't even get, no, let me not. But like stuff's happening, he's it's creepy and not in a good way. I'm just like, oh my gosh, what an experience. Anyways, I'm gonna go finish it, guys. I we're just <laughs> just when you think it can't get worse, it does. I don't even. Know. <laughs> I have to be honest.
perhaps the worst book I've ever read. I'm so sorry, I hate saying that. I don't wanna dunk on it, but like, I have to, because no, 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 one star, obviously. <laughs> guys, guys, perhaps the worst book I've ever read. You are going to jail, period. I have to spoil it for you. I can't talk about this and not spoil it. I don't think any of you are gonna read it. So let me spoil it. Okay, so she has this AI that she makes. Then like it can be put into chips in people's bodies. First she puts it in hers. Then there's this plot to put it in someone else's. She puts it in his spinal cord. Oh, also locks her mother in a Tesla and her mother has to like claw her way out of this Tesla. Anyways, put it in this guy's spinal cord. She gets caught before it goes through. Gets put in like a mental hospital. Is like there like trying to break out, like talking to the counselor, like my boyfriend, Henry. And the counselor's like, oh, his actions sound a bit controlling. Like, you think? <laughs> Finds out that this boy has like permanent spine damage from her. Then somehow there's like this agent from like this like tech company who's been monitoring her hacking skills and he, he comes and visits her in the hospital and she puts the chip in him so that Henry's in him. And then, 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 her and Henry run away together like, oh, he, woo, let's go. And then her and this Henry, who bear in mind, remember, is named after her young dead brother, go fuck in a hotel. <laughs> That is disgusting. I that is disgusting. I am not the one that started disgusting. it. I'm telling you what I heard. Disgusting. It is disgusting, isn't disgusting. it? Disgusting. It's just, that's a bit incesty, no? That's a little bit incesty. Oh, dear God. And it's so bad. Like, their relationship, the dynamics, terrible, abusive, awful, right? But that's never really... Yes, there's the council going, oh, he's a bit controlling. There, she never comes to that realization. Yes, you could say it's like a villain origin story. I'm not sure. Oh God, girl, girl. No, I draw a line. I always draw a line at incest. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Might be controversial in some YA spheres, <laughs> but that's where I draw the line. <laughs> One star, the writing was terrible. Like, terrible. I, I'm so sorry. I, I don't like being mean about books, but I can't lie. And I, I haven't felt this way about a book ever. <laughs> it was one of the worst things I've ever read. I, I don't even know what to say to you. Like, the, 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 she does terrible stuff with this guy and there's like never any repercussions for it. And the way, just the way that scenes are described is the worst, cheesiest, oh God. Did an eight year old write this? No, because I've seen the picture of the author. I don't want to be mean. I hope she never sees this. Don't watch this. <laughs> but like, guys, <laughs> I have nothing else to say. I have nothing else to say. I have nothing else to say. Moving on. <laughs> I'm actually gonna take a break from this vlog. I had to read that. If you see, well, you've seen that already? Yeah, you've seen me reading my hundredth book of the year. So I've had to read a certain number of books to get to my hundredth book of the year. So I'm gonna go do that vlog now. And then I will come back and hopefully the, re the other four books in this vlog, I feel like we have good luck with. So I just read the terrible one first. So I'll come back. I don't know what I'm gonna pick up first out of these. We'll see what I'm feeling like. I suppose I'll be reading fantasy, so maybe not. I'm actually sure a coven. Am I ready for the last housewife yet? I don't know. We shall see. But I'm gonna take a break and hopefully the vibes of the rest of this vlog will be completely different because we need it. <laughs> hello, hello. It's been a while. Well, for me in this vlog at least. I had to go read Hellbent and I had to go read Everything I Never Told You, my Patreon book club. But we're back, baby. <laughs> we're back and I am 100 pages into The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead. <laughs> this is a five star prediction. I don't know if it's necessarily feeling like one right now. <laughs> can't get any worse than what it is. Can it? It can't get any worse. We're at the bottom. Basically, all I need to know about the plot is we're following Shay, who is married. She's got a rich house husband. She's like painting her nails one day and listening to a podcast. Finds out, oh yeah, her best friend that she lived with at college has died. And the police are saying it's a suicide, but the podcaster, who is a childhood friend of hers, is saying it's a murder. And they've kind of teamed up to try and solve it. I think that's all I'm going to tell you. I'm getting the sense this is the kind of thriller that we're going to end it in a very different place than we started it. Judging by the trigger warnings that are at the start of this book, it's gonna be a difficult read. So I think I've told you before also that people have told me there's something to do with a sex cult. 
I thought that was in the girl's past, but there's the stuff that's happening in the present day in these first 100 pages, they visited somewhere that I think is that, that's like the present day stuff and she didn't seem to know the place. So maybe I've got my timelines mixed up perhaps, <laughs> but I, just, I don't know how I'm feeling about it yet. I think because it's the kind of thriller that's gonna be a bit twisty turny, is gonna change rapidly tonally. I think it's gonna get dark and messed up and a bit gruesome and a bit weird and a bit uncomfortable. That I, I think I don't, I can't really know how I feel about it at the moment. But it's because I don't really have any thoughts other than this was yet another five star prediction that may or may not be a five star. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this is a kind of book you cannot make your mind up in a hundred pages. There is podcast elements where she is um, like narrating to him some of their past, which I do like that as a way for a past timeline to happen. But can you see it's like, I say this, I say that. But I think it's an interesting way to tell the past story and it actually leaves me interested rather than if it was flashbacks, I think I'd get a bit bored. It's interesting seeing her tell things of her like teenage young adult self through her adult lens, I think is interesting, but I don't have many thoughts. But what I do have is book me. <laughs> I have two things. I have one that I ordered myself and one that I think is from a publisher. So let's open the one that I ordered first because I know what it is. <laughs> I did finally pick up The Last Word by Taylor Adam. This is one of my most anticipated releases of the year and it was just a little bit expensive so I've been holding off on buying it but I know a lot of people have enjoyed it. It's about a woman who writes like a negative review and the author like comes tracking her down. Wait, is this fucking play about us? I love No Exit by Ted Adams. I still think to this day, this is that is one of the best thrillers that I have ever read. Like I love No Exit. So I've had, had mixed things about The Last Word, but I'm hoping it will be up there. I'm hoping it could squeeze its way into the Goodreads Choice Awards at the end of the year, because maybe I'm doing a video about that again. <laughs> and this one is quite thin, whatever this one is. I think I have an inkling as to what this one is. Let's have a look. Oh yes, okay, it is The Christmas Guest by Peter Swanson. Ashley Smith's invited to spend Christmas with her classmates' family at their Cotswold Manor. Something strange about the old house. What could the motives of the mysterious family be? Oh, exciting. So the publisher reached out and asked whether I'd like to receive this and I said yes, because I'd already been planning to get my own hands on this. Excuse me. <laughs> get my own hands on this and read it around Christmas time. I think I'm gonna do a vlog just before Christmas of reading some Christmasy murder mysteries because there's a few coming out um, this year, in fact, that I wanna get to that sound really interesting. So it's super short. So thank you so much to the publisher for sending this my way. I am gonna read it this year around Christmas time. Great book haul. Look at those. Oh, they just both, both make me so excited. I will try and get like another, mm, how far in do I wanna get? <laughs> 150 pages tonight? I'd like to read about 150 pages tonight. We will see. And hopefully I'll check in with you right before I go to sleep. I'm gonna go do a dance now though. Fitness Marshall, my favorite. I love Fitness Marshall dance workouts. I have a playlist of just his, you know, individual song videos that I put on and I do. And it's well refined at this point. Like my playlist is a work of art and I just love dancing. It makes me so happy. It makes me feel so good. So I'm gonna go dance. <laughs> And I will see you maybe later tonight when I'm hopefully not too sweaty. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I'm 250 pages into The Last Housewife. I'm not loving it. I was in pure shock. I thought I might have misheard. I'm not loving it. I'm not disliking it, but I thought I would love this. Hang on. I'm 250 pages in and I honestly don't have many thoughts, but I'm just not loving the writing style, like linguistically, like the way it's feeling, not in terms of what's happening in the book, but in terms of like the language, the style of speaking, it's feeling very melodramatic. Like at the end of each chapter, there'll just be this very like, you know what I mean in, in thrillers when it's like, and I fall into the abyss of the drama or something. <laughs> And I don't know how to put this, right? So this is talking about, um, this is like minor spoilers, but abuse, uh, being framed as kink, but it's not that. It's abuse and possible even worse, even worse than abuse if that exists, but you know, I don't want to spell things out for you because I don't want to spoil anything, but abuse of women, right? 
disguised as kinky sex or whatever, but it's not that. Um, and that's kind of what is investigating. That's like a minor spoiler, but I warned you. <laughs> okay, spoiler over. I think this this stuff like this exists in the world, obviously, and on so many different levels. Um, there are so many issues with trafficking, with abuse, with all, all these different things, right? And I think it's so important that we discuss these topics. But I just person, and this is a personal thing, I don't feel like this really is. I don't feel, it's not, I don't feel like it's handling the subject with care, but I just feel like if we're going to talk about this and we're going to have a book about this, and I think a lot of people feel differently and feel like this has gotten to the meat and the depth of, of the topic, but I don't feel like we're really getting to any depth. But I feel like we're very surface level with our our discussion of of this and like I said stuff like this does happen in society and I'm just a bit disappointed for me personally again I think a lot of people feel differently about this but I just feel like we're not discussing what is happening beyond surface level I don't know if I've explained that right it just like reminds me if if this topic was to be handled on a crime tv show or something for an episode like that's how it feels like it's being handled a lot of the scenes we have in these situations feel very samey to me and you know what? i mean i'm not like i'm not an expert on this i don't speak for people who have gone through stuff in this book so they might read this and be like that's an accurate depiction of what i went through but for me i don't know i just feel like there's more that could be said and there's more that we could examine about the 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 depths of awfulness that these situations that can go to i don't know some of you might have read this and be like megan this is pretty fucking awful it is pretty fucking awful <laughs> what's happening in this book but i just feel like it could have gone deeper with its analysis and criticism personally maybe i should read non-fiction about this if i want that kind of discussion and not a thriller you know so i don't know <laughs> I don't know, guys. I'm going to go ahead and finish it. But this was a five-star prediction. That's all I'm going to say. And right now, it is not that. I'll see you in the morning. <laughs> I want to cry. Good morning. I'm just about to get ready. And this morning, I finished The Last Housewife. I'm going to give this three stars. I'm going to give it three stars. <laughs> My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. I feel like everyone else loved this. I feel like I go on my Goodreads and it's like five stars, five stars, five stars, five stars, five stars. Yeah, I'm really sad. This just didn't work for me. The writing didn't work for me. So I liked the podcast elements where it was written like a script. I liked those moments. But overall, it's just kind of disappointing. When you think this is gonna be a five star and it's a three, and a three is generous, if I'm honest with you. I'm giving it a three because I think it's important topics like this are covered, even if I don't think that it necessarily covered the topic in the way I wanted the topic to be covered. But like I said, maybe reading a topic like this in a thrillery setting isn't necessarily what I was looking for. But I mean, it's a three. It's a three. We kind of match though. It's making me nervous for Ashley Winstead's next book. I thought she was gonna become like a, you know, four or five star every time thriller author for me. Pfft, apparently not. <laughs> Someone who I really liked the writing style in, in My Dreams Had a Knife, I really did not like it in this. Like the way, the tone, you know, the way, oh, there's, there's stuff at the end up here where it's like impossible to say, I guess you get to decide. Like this is the melodrama. I'm not talking in terms of what happens in the book, I'm talking about the tone of voice. I just don't, I didn't vibe with it. Okay, I think we just, we move on. <laughs> <laughs> when am I gonna get a five star? Am I gonna get a five star on this video? I'm gonna cry. All I'm doing today is reading. So I don't know what book I'm gonna start next, but I'm hoping we're gonna finish the book that I start next and then read a good chunk of another book. All I'm doing is reading. I'm gonna go get ready for the day and then pick up something. Probably, I feel like I need an audiobook. I need something that I have the audiobook for. Maybe I'll just get the audiobook for. Actually, no, I think both Girl on the Walls and Her Majesty's Royal Coven are on script. So I will probably start one of those, but yeah. Don't talk to me, I'm very sad. <laughs> I 
haven't done my makeup yet. I haven't got ready for the day. I've actually read the first half of this, Go on the Walls, really quickly. I'm halfway through. I've just been listening to the audiobook whilst I did washing, put washing away. I did like, you know, life admin. I've just been listening to the audiobook. I'm gonna get ready for the day now properly. It's like two o'clock, but we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> Can I just say, I have always loved this cover so much. This cover is actually, it's a photograph and all of these layers of it like it's like, I'll try and find the article that I read about it but like they're all card cutouts that are layered back and then taken as a photo from the front and I just think it's so cool I've always really loved this I pre-ordered this this was a debut and I just like the sound of it on Warstones I think it was in my pre-ordering era where I just like pre-order books left right and center I'm not quite that girl now this is like 2021 so yeah I pre-ordered it and it's taken me two years to read <laughs> But I'm halfway through and basically the premise of this book is we're following Elise who is living in the walls of the house that she grew up in after her parents have died. That happens fairly early on, that's not a spoiler. And so you're following mainly her perspective but you're also following the family that now live in the house and them kind of, you know, is something weird going on or are they imagining it or whatever. But it's mostly about Elise and her grief kind of like we've kind of touched on that I guess we might go a bit further into that but her dealing with like the tactics and the the way that she doesn't let them know that she exists I guess this doesn't have a very high rating it's like a 3.4 on Goodreads and I can kind of understand why because it's very slow it's very intimate it not a lot is happening it's not a high stakes plot barely anything has happened in this first half but there is something about it that I am enjoying. It's kind of got that gothic style of book where you're in this creepy house, she's living, like she's literally living in their walls. Like she'll just be like, they'll be in the kitchen together and she'll be up against the wall with like, ah. The writing isn't lyrical, it's not lush, but there was this one line about when she was a kid and she liked to go to this, she liked to go to the park to see the Christmas lights with her family, where it says she had gone with her parents twice already that month, but before they had always arrived after dark. Now she wanted to see what celebration in the oaks looked like in the afternoon, when the sun still illuminated each of the bulbs and cords that weaved between the hedges and formed the outlines of reindeer and snowflakes. And I don't know, that's not exactly like, you know, beautiful writing, but there's something about that just captures an image. And I feel like that's something this book is doing really well. It's like capturing a vibe, capturing a moment, capturing an image, capturing an atmosphere that I feel like it's doing really, really well at. I don't know. This was a debut and I don't think the author has come out with anything since then, but there, I don't know. There's just something about the writing that feels, there's moments where it feels very accomplished for a debut. Well, I think it's about what it is to live. What, what does it mean to live? and it's about the need for connection, and it's about grief. And I think it's exploring that through an in interesting lens. I don't think it's gonna be five stars. <sighs> Will I ever get a five star again, honestly? That's never gonna happen, ever, ever, ever. Like... If I read all of my favorite books all the time at this point, I think they could be four stars. Like, it's, <laughs> it's a problem. But I am enjoying it. So I'm just listening to the audiobook. I'm definitely gonna finish this in the next couple hours. And then we'll start another book today, guys. We're gonna achieve my goal of finishing a whole book today and at least starting another book because I don't know, I just felt like the last house stuff took me like five days to read when it really should not have done. So yeah, I'll see you in a little bit once I have read some more and put my makeup on and I look more human. <laughs> I literally finished A Girl on the Walls 10 seconds ago. <laughs> Because I'm currently on sprints with my patrons. I've got seven minutes and 33 seconds <laughs> until the sprint is over. So I want to make sure I have time to talk to you about it. This is a very interesting book. It's a very, I'd say it's a little odd, unusual book. It's not, I wouldn't say it's like weird, weird. Like out there as like experimental, like super weird horror or whatever that you read. But it is just a little bit odd. It doesn't necessarily follow conventions that we think we're gonna see in books. Okay, I'm feeling weird right now. I'm feeling like so weird. I skimmed, I haven't read it all, but I was skimming, there's like an author Q&A at the back. And he says that this was written during a class taught by actually Nina Dragomont, who's the author of The Christie Affair, if you've read that. That's like a book written from the perspective of Agatha Christie's husband's mistress. But anyways, and I think you can tell that this comes from like a writing class. I don't know how to describe it. It's not written with, 
I don't think mass appeal in mind or like making, you know, becoming a super popular like bestseller. It's written a little bit experimentally and written more for the idea. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I really liked following the girl as a character. I think it soft, it like softly touches on themes of grief and loss and home and family and belonging and etc etc. But it's not heavy handed with them. It's very like soft with its touching on them. I don't know what I'm gonna rate this. I, I'm torn between a 3.5 and a 4. I think the last chapter, there was, I liked the little touch that the last chapter was. It's the kind of ending that I think some people will think is a little bit fairy tale like or a little bit like on the nose or a little bit stupid, you know, like a little bit movie like, you know, where stuff happens that would never really happen in real life, but I liked it. So I think I'm going to give it a four. I'm glad to have finally read it. It's been on my TBR for so long. It didn't take, I read it all today, basically. But it wasn't a five, you know? I think it's interesting. I liked the writing style, like I said. I would really be interested in reading more from this author in the future, but he hasn't published anything else. I do think some people will go into this with the synopsis, like, oh, there's a girl hiding in the walls thinking it's going to be like a horror. Like, imagine if, you know, someone was living in your wall right now. Like, it's not that to me at least. That's not how it read. It wasn't scary. It wasn't spooky. It was more about the emotions of the characters than the than the situation themselves. So anyways, a four. We have yet to find a five star. I was angry. I was angry. But will our next one, this is, like I said at the start of the video, I think out of any book in this vlog, this is the one that I think could get a five star. It's her uh, her Majesty's Royal Coven by Juno Dawson. It's witches. It's set in the UK government. Everyone's been telling me I'm gonna love it. So I feel like it should be a five star. <laughs> I feel like if it's not, we've got a problem. So I'm gonna start this tonight. I'm hoping to get like a hundred pages in. So maybe I will check in with you before I go to sleep if I do get that far. But I feel like this has to be a five star, surely. Surely, what's a girl gonna do for a five star these days? sell my soul? <laughs> I don't know. This will be it guys, this will be it. It's Her Majesty's Royal Coven, come on. Come on, it has to be a five star. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> guys, I'm 100 pages in to Her Majesty's Royal Coven. I'm loving it. <gasps> I'm loving it! <laughs> Finally. Some good fucking food. So, all you need to know about this is that we have got five women in the present day who seem to be friends as young girls who are all witches. They're all witches, right? But they're all kind of like living their witchy lives <laughs> in different ways. Some are involved in Her Majesty's Royal Coven, which is like the governmental department for witches. Some are just like living family lives. Some used to be in HMRC, but are now living with other covens or like doing other jobs or whatever. And we're following them each chapter switches perspective between them but we definitely have some that we follow more Neve in particular is probably the one that we follow the most I'm just loving it oh yeah I'm loving the writing it's reminding me actually let's just talk about quickly what just arrived today <laughs> oh my god Jesus Christ Check out they've the blessed me <laughs> The next Thursday Murder Club. And it's actually reminding me of each other in the way that this does like British references. Like the way that this talks about like a boy zone or Spice Girls, I'm just like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Yep, I just love when I open a book and I see, um, first of all, the dedicate, or not dedication, but like there's a quote about the Spice Girls. <laughs> page and then we're talking about boy zone on the first actual page of the book like that's just that just makes sense to me that is just yeah <laughs> so i'm loving that there's also a lot of mention of this war that happened i don't know like 10 years ago or something for them like a witchy war and all these characters have history i think so often we read books where like characters get to know each other over the course of the book but these girls have like a lifetime of history in particular this war which seems to have been incredibly traumatic and have gone through something so you know deep and emotional and harrowing together and have that shared history i think is a really interesting place to come at the book from. So I'm just loving it. Jenna Dawson, what did you put in this? I'm having so much fun. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. I do love a fun book. The witchiness is witchy, by the way. The witchiness is witching. The witchiness is witching. 
yes boss yes yep yep i'm like talking in my headset that the witchiness is witching because <laughs> like i said before i hate when you promise me witches and you don't give me witches whereas you're giving me witches in this i feel like we've learned just enough about the world and the magic system in the first 100 pages where it hasn't been info dumpy but we've learned about witches and warlocks and types of witches they all have different kinds of powers but it hasn't been too much. It hasn't been overpowering. Like, we've been getting to the characters, getting into the world, but the prose has been engaging. <sighs> I don't want to speak too soon. I don't give five star. Imagine if it's a five star. I think I'd cry. I think I'd actually cry. <laughs> It's a five star. I don't even care that I'm starting another series because yeah, I'm, I think I'm gonna read this whole thing tonight. It's like half four. I'm gonna go out for a run now and then come back and wash my hair. But then the rest of the evening, I'm gonna be in my PJs, cut up in bed with a candle on reading this book and it's gonna be five stars. I will see you in a bit. I am now about 270 pages into Her Majesty's Royal Coven and I'm still loving it. <laughs> Still loving it. I'm loving the sisterhood of the characters. I'm loving all of the characters. I'm loving how they're like, because when they were kids, they all wanted to be like one of the Spice Girls and they're like using the Spice Girl archetypes to or like, Juno Dawson's using the Spice Girl archetypes to like examine different aspects of a person and different things each of these women could be feeling. I'm just loving it. And something happened that I'm not gonna call it a twist because I never call something like this a twist. But something happened that I had seen. I was like, oh, I wonder if we're going to go down that route. I wonder if that's going to happen. And it did. And I just think it's being handled so well. I don't want to, you know, mention it because I think many people go into this book not knowing it. Not knowing that that's going to happen in this book. I think it's being handled very well. And it's something... How do I say this without spoiling anything? It's something I've thought about often when it comes to writing a book, particularly a fantasy book. And a fantasy book that has um, a magic system built on certain, mm, <laughs> built on certain, um, you know, any, any magic system has a framework, right? And I'm like, how could you do this kind of magic system? I don't want to spoil anything, but be inclusive and be, and celebrate everything that would encompass under that magic system. Like, how do you, how do you, yeah, make those how do you join those up together? And I just feel like this is doing such a wonderful job of that. I'm absolutely loving it, guys. I'm like obsessed. It is so readable. It's funny, it's fun, it's lighthearted, but also serious. It's witchy. I feel like the world, the magic is so well built out. I am like, oh my God, guys, I've already got the sequel. Oh, you can't see it. I can't get it out of the car. The car is too tightly packed. I'm so glad I've already got my hands on the sequel because I'm like kind of obsessed. What if this is gonna be five stars? It's feeling like it could be five stars right now, guys. It's feeling like it's a possible five star slay. <laughs> okay, everyone, I want you to prepare yourselves because I think we know what I'm gonna say. Five stars. Oh my god, I'm so happy. I am giving Her Majesty's Royal Coven five stars. I loved it. It was just such like a little special book. I don't know, sometimes, god, I'm not used to having a five star. I'm not used to having any nothing to critique. I'm like, what do I say? <laughs> but I just loved it. I loved the sisterhood. I loved the characters that we followed. I thought the setting in this like rural Yorkshire town was so vivid. Like I could really picture all of the houses and the hills and the settings. I just loved it. I just want to say, the mild spoilers, mild, mild, mild spoilers. So click ahead like a, you know, few tens of seconds if you don't want to hear. I really hope the person, well, multiple people, multiple people died, but I really hope the person who I don't want to be dead isn't dead. I really hope they're not dead because that will make me really sad. <laughs> it made me really sad. But yeah, what this had to say, God, this is difficult because I didn't know going into it what a big theme a certain theme would be in this and I think it is done so well and handled so well that I don't want to tell you about it but it makes it very difficult to talk about the rest of the book but you know what this says about belonging and people deserving to belong and what true intersectional feminism should be I just loved it and I love witches and it gave me witches the one thing I would say I mean, it's a five star, so like, this isn't a major critique. But like, I would, I would love in a future book if we got into the more like how the witches uh, relate to the politics, because it's kind of just glanced upon like, oh yeah, the prime minister signs like a whatever, whatever. But as somebody who loves politics, and and this is like pitched as like the witchy um, 
division of <laughs> government in the UK. I would have liked, there's, there's nothing really to do with the political side of it, really. Like, how it connects to like mortal, or they call them mundanes, people without magic. How it connects to mundane politics. I think that could be a fun angle for it to go into a future book. They reminded me of The Rook, which is like a supernatural division within government. And that one is much more set like how it relates to government or whatever, much more as a governmental department. We spend a lot of time in rural Yorkshire in this, which I loved, but I just think in a future book, there is room for it to go down that route of like, I don't know, getting a bit more political, but I loved it. I loved it. It's my sass. Really? Yes. Oh my God. What, what do you think? What, what, what do you think? Thank like? you. Thank you, everybody. Oh. Wait, you I think it's like a rite of passage for a lot of, British girls to become obsessed with Anne Boleyn when they were a kid. I was obsessed with Anne Boleyn. And the idea of like Anne Boleyn being like the first witch, oh, I loved it. I loved it. I was obsessed with Anne Boleyn when I was a kid. So glad to already have my hands on the second one, the Shadow Cabinet. I'm very excited, but I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I wanted to go down a certain route and I'm very, very nervous that it's not going to. Let me not look because I will spoil myself, but I love it. Okay, right, last book. I'm gonna read the whole book today. Educated by Tara Restova. Let's go. Hi friends, around Tom's now. I have no idea how long footage I've got left on this SD card, <laughs> I'm honest. But I am just over halfway through Educated. I'm actually like 210 pages through. So I'm a little bit over halfway. And the thing with this memoir is I'd always heard about it being pitched as like, sorry, it's like I'm sat in front of a big window and there's just like loads of people walking past. <laughs> Slowly but surely you start to realize, actually, I can't nip to the garage in my pajamas anymore for a paint of milk, even if I want to. I'd always heard about it as she, it's about a woman who as a child, her parents were like part of the end of days movement idea, like doomsday, the end of the world is coming. And she never received an education and that it's about that. And yes, it is. I've just gotten to the part really where she goes to university for the first time. But what this is really about, in my view, is the abuse she suffered as a child. And I'm guessing, at the moment, I don't think she realizes, like at this point in the narrative, I don't think she realizes that she has been abused, but the way that her and her siblings and her mother's safety is constantly put in jeopardy and in harm's way and without any care by their father, I think is really what this book is about. Like there is shocking event after shocking event of things that happen to these kids that's just like brushed over. They don't believe in doctors. Their mother is like their healer, but there's, you know, I guess this is like minor spoilers, but just an example is there's like this car crash that her mother gets, well, they all, they're all in and her mother gets serious brain trauma from it in which she never fully recovers. She has like raccoon eyes is what they call her, which is actually a term for someone with serious brain injury. And she just never gets, they don't believe in going to the hospital. They don't believe in going, or her dad in particular doesn't believe in that. And so it's a very hard read. I think like go into this, I don't think I was expecting the level of abuse in terms of like physical safety that this book has, but it is very well written. I'm enjoying it. I find some people don't rate nonfiction at all. And I do, but I think this is a bit of a tricky one to rate because at the moment it's feeling like a four star just because it's not feeling like a five. Do you know what I mean? But I am still enjoying it. And I think the second half is gonna get into a lot of her being educated for the first time and learning for the first time. She's at university and she doesn't know what the Holocaust was. She doesn't know the truth about slavery in America. Like they don't, they've got taught nothing, these children. Yeah, this is a book that will make you angry, but I think it's an important read, but I think it's just, it's different than what I was necessarily going into it expecting. So I'm enjoying it. I think it's very interesting. It's very well written. I think it reads almost like a fiction book in how she's constantly like, moving the plot along very well, integrating how she feels about certain things with what is actually happening. But I also think it's difficult coming at a book like this so many years after the hype, right? I feel like so many people read this in like 2019 or whatever, like around that time. And so it's, it's difficult. I don't know if you can ever get like a, 
natural read of a book that's been so hyped up and everyone's given it five stars and everyone's raved about it and everyone's loved it that many years down the line once the hype has died down but you've still like you've consumed all the hype right like that's such a difficult standard for a book to reach and so I don't know if it's just feeling like yeah this is great but it's not does there need to be an element of surprise for a five star or an element of like novelty or an do you know what I mean I'm questioning <laughs> <laughs> a lot in my life what maketh a five star so anyways i'm gonna go ahead and finish this and i will check in with you once i have and that'll be the last book of the vlog guys yay <laughs> so i just finished educated i read this really quickly i feel like i almost read it too quickly <laughs> like i just read it so fast and i'm gonna give this a four star I did really enjoy this. I think it is worthy of the accolades that has been given. I think it is fascinating. You know, really this boils down to, I was thinking about it and I've seen it, you know, not in my personal life, but in many other people's lives. It's like how family can hurt you the most. This is a very extreme example, <laughs> but you know, family, your family in many ways knows you better than anyone or knows how to hurt you better than anyone. And obviously this is a very, very extreme example, but I don't know, I just think this was a very well written book. I think it must have taken a lot to unpack all of this and put it in a book and like, know really in reality that you are forever to some degree alienating yourself from your family for doing something like this. That requires an incredible amount of bravery uh, that I don't think a lot of people have. So I really enjoyed it, but I almost had like no thoughts other than that. I thought I found this one really <laughs> difficult to talk about it. I've just like read it and consumed it. I think what it talks about is religion is very interesting. It's very interesting when I've, I've been consuming like a lot of media, you know, I watched um, some documentaries and I've watched other people, why did I just almost fall over? Uh, <laughs> other people talking about this, just in different, like, you know, circumstances about Mormonism, right? And I just think it's interesting because we don't really have anything, uh, I feel like in the UK equivalent to Mormonism. It's a very American, I feel like, because this is my perception, don't come at me if I'm wrong for this, but like a very American religion. And we don't have anything in the UK with this like fundamental Christian tilt to it with the same strength and like, amount of people following it as Mormonism in the US. So I just think it's interesting to think about that and how the place that Mormonism has in the United States and how it affects things. But yeah, the reason it's only a four star is, not a five, because I haven't really said anything bad about it, is that it's not a five. <laughs> I didn't get five star vibes from it. And also, I just think like there's part of me, I wish we could have gone, I think it should have gone more into depth on the education side of it because she kind of, it's really about her family and it brushes over, a, I feel like a lot of the academic like progress that she makes because I, as someone who like, it lives in the UK, I just like the, the jump that she's made from not being homeschooled, having no education, not knowing what the Holocaust was, not knowing about slavery, to like studying at Cambridge is like, I feel like she didn't, it just happens. <laughs> and of course it's like incredible hard work from her to get to that point, but in my brain, I know people who have like had, you know, top education are incredibly clever who might not get into Cambridge. Like it's, it's difficult, you know? And so in my brain, I'm like, but tell me how. <laughs> I don't know, and like, and then goes on to get a doctorate, and does it goes to Harvard, and does all these things. I just felt like I don't know. Some of that progress was kind of like brushed over, and as someone who's very interested in like academia and whatever, I would have liked to that to have gone into more detail. But I really enjoyed this, and listen, we found a five star on this vlog, guys. I haven't got all the other books with me because I'm around Tom's. Listen, we found a five star in Her Majesty's Royal Coven. But yes, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. Uh, reading the wrapped up rejects. <laughs> seeing if any of them would have ended up being a five star from that original vlog and thank you guys so much for watching comment a present emoji down below if you got to the end and i will see you very soon in another video bye